Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to Nick's vlog. Today's date is February, uh, Thursday, February 14th, 2019. And I'm your host Nick. Welcome to Nick's vlog. Uh, this is a continuation of my first vlog this morning. And yes, it's still raining, although it's kind of let up a little bit here. Fortunately, I'm over here at the storage locker in San Diego. This time of year it does pour rain. Here, well, like I said before, most of the country is uh, in a deep freeze. At least we're not that, so people won't be turning into a popsicle. Although something I've noticed since I started coming down south to Texas has started is that crazy people, homeless people, I'm homeless too, uh, but unlike these druggies, drunks, uh, screwballs, nut jobs, that are homeless, that don't shave, they don't cut their hair, they're messes and they're carrying their worldly possessions in a backpack or pushing a cart, I don't know why, I don't know what kind of possessions they could have, but they move into a bathroom, and I mean move in. They are in that bathroom, they'll be in that bathroom all day. Now something George Orwell said in writing 1984 is that the telescreens in the laboratories are always monitored. He's right. You never know for sure when a telescreen is being monitored. For you can't monitor every telescreen all the time. You can't. It's physically impossible. You'd need one person for every telescreen. It's just enough people on the planet. But the laboratories are always monitored by the police, by somebody. So these people, I, I suspect strongly that they're doing something they probably shouldn't be doing. And they're thinking that a bathroom is locked. They don't care. They don't have comprehension that you know, other people may have to go to the bathroom. It's public. Uh, I better move along. So what they do is, is that they move into a bathroom. They'll stay there all day long. I waited this morning for 20-something minutes for some bum. I, I looked at the man and I go, oh, go figure a bum. A bum. I don't know what else you would call someone. I'm homeless too, by the way. But unlike them, I'm not a druggie. I'm not a drunk. I'm not crazier than anyone else next to me. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know. They tend to move into these places, these bathrooms. It started in Texas. In the panhandle, by the way. And all the way down, all the way out here, too. It doesn't change. That does not change. Although, a lot of other things do change. Texas is the worst. Let me tell you something. Any place that has a light on in Texas, any place that has more than a vehicle par pulled up, will have a bum. Will have a fleet of bums like prison. And uh, they'll want cigarettes. They'll want money. I mean, you would have to have $1,000 a day in cigarettes and money to help, to help these people out. And they're crazy, and they're just going to buy more drugs with the money anyway. I mean, it's pretty obvious what they're doing with this money. Unless they have cards on the table. It's not like the police, what can they really do? Yeah, they could lock them up and improve their life by giving them three meals a day and somewhere to lay down. And they won't be able to stay in the bathroom all day because, um, guess what, you're going to have to move your meat. You're going to have to move your rear end. Because off the toilet, because other people want to use it. You don't get to monopolize the toilet all day. But other than that, you know, what, what do you want? You know, the threat of prison and jail is only for most of us. But not for certain people that are crazy and druggies. They don't know. It would be an improvement, if anything. Well, anyway, I'm waiting for this bum to come out. And it was a bum. A homeless bum like myself, but unlike myself, crazy, probably on drugs, I don't know for sure, but he didn't seem to know what pl what planet he was on or anything like that. You know, beard, uh, cra crazy, crazy looking. I just go, uh, go figure a bum. You know, it just wise up. The last place you ever want to be is in a laboratory, a bathroom, a toilet. Lock that door and not expect that there's a telescreen being monitored. They're just letting you do that. That's all. Or they can't get there because they're actually doing something else and can't get there for a while. But believe me, it's being monitored. In 1948, when George Orwell wrote 1984, a very good book, the best book probably ever written, you know, they've known since 1948 
some people have known that those laboratories all have telescreens, all have cameras, and they're monitoring them. Somebody is monitoring them. It's just a matter of can they get there in time. Do they even want to bother to some bomb? I don't know. But the bottom line is it's a pain in the rear end. I mean, one of the employees, finally it was so long, one of the employees started banging on the door like, hey, hey, come on, get going. You know, kind of wonder, you know, I kind of wonder if they're a terrorist. You know, maybe the police should be notified. Maybe these people that are in there for an hour or two, maybe they're a terrorist. Maybe they're planning on blowing the place up. I don't know. It makes you wonder. It does make me wonder. Maybe the police should be notified. Maybe the police can get in and see if the person's all right. You know, maybe if this is done enough, maybe these bums of word will get around. That, hey, you know, somebody's calling the cops. No, huh? huh? Something to think about. You know, be a shame if that started happening, because they'd have to come out and respond to it. Because it could be a terrorist. It could be somebody that's lost. It could be someone hurt. It could be someone dead. It could be a terrorist, ready to blow the place up, kill a bunch of people. We just don't know. I mean, they want to be in a locked room by themselves. Who knows what they are? Who knows? Can't really say for sure. And just because maybe somebody is one of those people watching this blog right now, maybe they're okay, but that doesn't mean the next person's okay. You know, the next person doing it might be very bad. Might be indeed very bad. But anyway, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and checking this out. I'll try to get on later on. Oh, I see I got my shirt on. It says a blood drive, which I uh, participated. It was at the Walgreens parking lot of all places over at Balboa and uh, Genesee here. In uh, San Diego. Did that a while ago. They gave me this nice shirt for it. Blood drive and all that stuff here. And for San Diego. Who knows. Might need it one day. Somebody might need it. You know. But. Uh, the bottom line is. People got a clue out of that bathroom. Man. They're public bathrooms. Now here. They have a public bathroom too. But here you're paying. At least 56 to 60 dollars a month. So this bathroom is very quiet, and there's nobody here right now. It's very early, so nobody's here. And it keeps, it's iron gates, electric, and you have to have a pin to get in, and pin is part of your driver's license number, which, by the way, all driver's licenses now are federal, just because we have 50 federal IDs is what it is. They're all federal to federal standards. And that's why you receive your driver's license or your state ID now in the mail. Is that they're really checking you out. You need your fingerprints taken and everything. I, some states are even doing retina scans. They're making sure you're okay. And that's why they're doing it this way. That's why it takes so long to get your license and everything else. Your state ID, if that's what you're relying on, it's a state ID. Either way, you're waiting a couple of weeks to get your license physical card back because they're waiting and that's why your copy of the card that they print out is just the same it's because it needs to be the same so that way you can cash checks you can move about you can apply for jobs or uh, government doles or whatever on this uh temporary piece of paper that's why though it's federal it's all federal. Since September 11, 2001, they've been wanting to do this, and they finally did it. So, you know, maybe these people that are living, they're homeless and they're crazy, they don't check out. There's there's things that they just don't check out. And as a result, because they don't check out, you know, they're crazy and they're living in bathrooms. And the heck with anybody else that may have to actually use the bathroom, like to urinate or to have a bowel movement, or maybe both. To hell with everybody else. They're in there, and they're going to be there all day. They have no comprehension of anyone else. They long ago. You know, I think it was Ronald Reagan that said, well, we have to close the mental institutions because that's what's taking up all the money. That wasn't true, because they did close the mental institutions. That's why all these screwballs are on the streets and in bathrooms. is because of Ronald Reagan. He closed them. Well, the, what happened? The taxes went up. Everything went up. Everything goes up, by the way. Everything. And uh, so that obviously wasn't them. They could have been housed. And they are institutionalized still. They still have institutions. 
I'm not saying they don't. We do still. But the beds are much fewer beds available and everything else. And just look. In any big city, or if you're in Texas, in any little town, you'll see a bunch of screwballs running around, walking around out there like zombies. A bunch of zombies running around, walking and hobbling around. And, uh, yeah, thanks, Reagan. Thanks, man. We can all thank him. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because it wasn't, they weren't the reason why things were going up in price. Things are still going up in price, by the way. Everything's going up our tax, everything. <laughs> it wasn't the screwballs that we were housing. And we need to go back to housing them. You know, when you're that crazy, you shouldn't be in, the, you know, take them away. Get a big hook. Hook that guy. Hook that woman. Hook them. Pull them into a rubber room something. Block the booby hatch. Put the boobies in the booby hatch and make sure that booby hatch is locked. Put the boobies in there, lock it, and feed them. And you know they don't even wear, they don't take baths, they don't do anything like change gloves. So it'd be pretty cheap to house them. <laughs> you know that's what they do normally. They're just out running around. They stink and uh, they are filthy. They're disease ridden. Yet they're alive and you don't, you know they do have feelings and all that. Sure, just. Lock them up and put them in a rubber room. Make sure the booby hatch is locked. You know, some idiot wants the booby hatch unlocked and the boobies get out. And <laughs> then we have trouble there, too. That's always happened. There's always someone out there who's not a booby, but unfortunately doesn't latch the booby hatch. And the boobies get out for a while and they have to be recaptured and put back in the booby, uh, booby room, the rubber room, you know. And make sure the booby hatch is locked this time. But eventually some other booby hatch will be unlocked and the boobies will get out of that one. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for their time. Listen to me rant there a little bit. Anyway, um, don't forget, please hit that like button on my video or anyone else's video if you happen to think about it. It's at the bottom of the screen there, uh, bottom of the video there. The like, and also do a search for Irish Traveler living in my car. Uh, nomad, we're nomadic people, we live in our vehicles, and I uh, hope to talk to everybody real soon. Again, thank you for your time. I'll talk to you real soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.